the North Carolina Department of Transportation welcomes you to today's meeting. The Complete 540 project would connect the southern end of the Triangle Expressway near Apex with the eastern end of the existing Interstate 540 near Nightdale, a distance of about 30 miles. This project is being proposed in response to population increases and continued land development predicted to occur in this area and the increasing strain this growth will place on many area roads. Without more traffic capacity in this area, or other new options for travel, the service provided by area roads is expected to degrade to unacceptable levels. The study for the Complete 540 project began by examining a wide range of options for maintaining acceptable levels of mobility in the future. These options included staggering work hours at large employment centers, making improvements at major intersections or in the timing of traffic signals, introducing or expanding mass transit in the area, and building some new roadway lengths while upgrading others. After reviewing these options, the North Carolina Department of Transportation's project team concluded that none of these would be a practical or feasible solution. The project team further concluded that completion of the 540 outer loop as a new highway was the best option to study in detail. At that point, the project team began gathering basic information about natural features, neighborhoods, and communities in the study area. This land use information was then used to begin developing possible route locations for the new highway. A large number of general routes called corridors were developed. These corridors consisted of individual segments that could be combined in many different ways to form complete end-to-end -end routes. Public meetings were held in 2010 and again in 2013 to get public comments on these initial corridor locations and on the preliminary information about how they might affect the area. The project team also discussed this information with local, state, and federal agencies who are responsible for land use planning or the protection of natural resources. After assessing how these routes would affect the area, and after reviewing all the public and agency comments on those findings, the project team selected 17 of these corridors as warranting more detailed study. These are known as Detailed Study Alternatives, or DSAs. The Detailed Study Alternatives are based on a six-lane controlled access concept. This means that access to and from the proposed project would be allowed only at interchanges. There would be 13 of these interchanges, one at each of the major crossroads in the study area. Grouped together on one map, the 17 detailed study alternatives consist of various combinations of 10 segments, each with a different color. In the west, there are four basic locations. The orange segment generally follows the path that has been protected from development since the 1990s. The red segment is an alternative to the north, and the purple and blue segments form an alternative to the south. The shorter lilac segment provides another choice for connecting orange or blue. These variations each have a different set of advantages and disadvantages. In the east, a route that was identified in the 1990s is designated as the green segment. Several shorter segments have been developed as part of the current study to avoid different types of impacts in this eastern area. With these alternatives established, the next step was to begin work on technical studies documenting how each of these DSAs would affect or impact the area. Much of this work included site visits to gather specific information and to take accurate measurements of existing conditions. All of these studies were documented in a series of technical reports. The subjects of those reports include project purpose and need, traffic forecasts, community impacts, historic resources, air quality and noise impacts, natural resources and protected species, hydraulics and drainage, utility impacts, indirect and cumulative effects, stakeholder involvement, and others. Large size mapping of each alternative was developed at this time as well. These maps include the basic configurations of interchanges, the improvements needed to side streets to maintain access to parcels, and many other engineering details. Smaller maps of each alternative, along with summaries of all the technical studies, have been included in a document called an Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS. This document contains chapters on 
the purpose of the proposed project and the problems it would help solve, the natural and social environment in the study area, various options or alternatives for solving those problems, the ways the various alternatives would affect the environment, and how the public was informed about the study and involved in it. Each of the technical reports prepared for the study are included as attachments to the main document. The official draft version of the Environmental Impact Statement was recently approved by the Federal Highway Administration. It has been available for public review and comment at several area locations since November 6th. An electronic version of this document was also placed on the NCDOT website at this time. Federal approval marked the beginning of the official review and comment period for the draft EIS. This comment period will end on January 8, 2016. The three public meetings and one public hearing being held this week are an important part of this review period. These events are a time for all members of the public to study the maps of the highway location alternatives, to review the findings contained in the draft EIS, and to discuss the project with the NCDOT project team and with your friends and neighbors in the community. Most importantly, it's a time when all who wish to can make formal comments about the study for the project's official public record. Once this review and comment period has ended, on January 8th, the NCDOT, the Federal Highway Administration, and local, state, and federal officials will closely review all comments made and will review all the impact information developed for the project. Based on those reviews, NCDOT and the Federal Highway Administration will select one of the current 17 alternatives as the final preferred route for the project. This one final route is considered the build alternative, the location and basic design that would be used if the project is approved. The build alternative will then be compared against the no build or no project alternative. This comparison ensures that the decision about whether to construct the project is made in a clear and informed way. Once the NCDOT and the Federal Highway Administration make this decision, it will be documented in an official record of decision, which will bring the study process to a close. If the build alternative is selected, the project would move forward to the next stages. These include preparing final construction plans, obtaining the necessary construction permits, securing funding, purchasing the land needed for the road's right-of-way, and constructing the project. If the no-build alternative is selected, the project would be terminated. Should it ever re-emerge at some future time, a new study would be carried out for it. The currently adopted State Transportation Improvement Program indicates that, if approved, the complete 540 project would be divided into three segments for right-of-way acquisition and construction, from NC55 to US-401, from US-401 to I-40, and from I-40 to US-64, US-264 bypass. Before any of these decisions can be made, however, we need to hear from you. We invite you to review the materials on display and discuss the project with the NCDOT project team members who are here today. Detailed maps of each alternative route are on display on large panels in the middle of the room. They contain a great deal of information about the alternatives being considered. Another important display includes a matrix showing how each of the alternative routes would affect important natural and community features. The colors next to the alternatives show which segments combine to form each alternative. In addition to these displays, NCDOT project team members are available at tables dedicated to various topics that may be of particular interest. These include noise impacts, property acquisition procedures, information about the North Carolina Turnpike Authority, and others. Once you have reviewed these materials, we invite you to provide a comment about the project for the official record. Comments can be made in writing by filling out a comment form. They can be completed here today and turned in at the comment table, or they can be mailed to us later. Comments can also be submitted using the study's website or the My Sidewalk online forum. The due date for all comments is January 8, 2016. No matter which method you choose to provide your comments, all are considered equally. No one method is better than any other. More information on each of these methods is included in the brochure you received at the sign-in table. 
The Complete 540 study would not be possible without the collaboration and advice of local, state, and federal agencies and the policy guidance provided by local and regional governments. The study would also not be possible without you, the members of the public who live and work in the area. We sincerely appreciate the patience you have shown as this study has progressed, and we thank you for your thoughtful participation throughout this study process. <laughs>